that. Well, and so at the conclusion of Jackie's report, she said the question is whether or not, because we already know he's going to talk a lot about how bad things were during the, uh, during the uh, Trump years. Uh, the question is whether or not he actually names his campaign rival by name, because a, a long tradition is you never pick on a person by name. The other uh, concern is whether or not uh, he's going to use the word abortion. Because as a practicing Catholic, uh, you know, he, he doesn't use abortion. He talks about reproductive rights or he uses right to choose, but he does not use it. But because it has been such a potent weapon for Democrats, there's a real good possibility he would break with his own personal tradition and use abortion. And he could, by name, call out Donald Trump. He would be smart if he talked about immigration and closing the border because we hear from people, we heard at the diner, what would you like these candidates to talk more about? We want to hear how they're going to close the border. Right. So if he were smart, he'd talk about that. He would talk about the economy. He's going to talk about shrinkflation, apparently, like how many potato chips you have in the bag when you open it. Um, which is part of the problem, but not the big problem. People just need to afford the potato chips or be able to afford the food on their table. And Dave, David Axelrod talked about that messaging. There's a lot of talk uh, from the president and others about, you know, the soul of the nation and, and the future of democracy. But if you're sitting around your kitchen table uh, and talking about the future of democracy, you probably don't you have, you're not paying a lot of attention or don't need to to the cost of the food on your table. Uh, and most Americans have more immediate concerns. Biden has to address those tomorrow night and explain how he's fighting for them. He has to be willing to take the L and say we failed on some things. Uh, I don't think he's going to do it. He's no. probably going to talk about guns, although conveniently he doesn't care about his son a having a like weapons charge. And, and his son has a weapons mm -hmm. charge because he was doing drugs. He's going to take on the rich and say the rich need to pay their taxes. Uh, I wish my Republican colleagues, his son doesn't pay his taxes. He's going to talk about the border and say Donald Trump broke the border. And if they would have signed this bill, but he's not going to discuss all the executive orders that he undone, uh, undid on day one. So so there's an opportunity. If they really want to reset, they got to do something different. I just don't think he's prepared to One do that. One of y'all said at the beginning of the show was you, Brian, that said if you have to do a reset <laughs> yeah. after three years in, there's a problem. Yeah. They right. want to reset the polls, ultimately, is what they want Correct. to reset. Right. And, you know, the thing is, uh, I think there's a frustration among uh, many in the media that all they're running down to the president, the fact that he's chaos, they say he's unworthy, they say with all the, with all the lawfare that's taking place, they said, weren't you guys listening to me? How could you possibly nominate him? How could he be beating the president in all four major polls right now? Every battleground state except one poll in Pennsylvania, he's within one, as if they're saying nobody is listening to me like mm -hmm. you used to. And if you think about it, um, Nikki Haley, I think, would admit this. I thought would admit this. I'm surprised she's using it. They say, with Trump brings chaos. I would like to do a study. How many times Trump <laughs> brings chaos, and how many times chaos comes to him and he fights back? Mm -hmm. If you didn't have the Russia investigation, I thought that was a huge leap mm -hmm. to even bring up the, the impeachment Ukraine in a conversation, mm -hmm. although don't suppose Ru 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 Rudy Giuliani was doing. And then the pandemic hits, and the president went front and center on something that hasn't happened in a generation mm -hmm. and a half. Mm -hmm. So if you possibly looked at him and had the same type of discerning attitude with him as you had that you have with Biden, it might be a different story. And right now, to the chagrin of many, according to Peter Baker in the New York Times today, and a study said that 47% uh, of the American people think that Trump has a better chance of peace and security uh, in the next four years than, uh, well, but, than uh, Joe Biden, because it has at 30 percent. He has a direct record to run on when there was peace, when you had the Abraham Accord. But he was supposed to bring no normalcy. Wars, and, and, but he didn't do it. And I think that's the big point that you're making. And we're going to see this again. Yeah. As you see, both of the candidates, the rematch is happening. This is what Donald Trump had to say on True Social. After Nikki Haley dropped out. Exactly. It is important for the good of the country that Joe Biden and I debate on issues that are vital to America and the American people. Therefore, I am calling for a debate anytime, anywhere, any place. So he's ready. This is going to be the longest general election. Yeah. The question is, Will Joe Biden agree he to this? He should. He, ha he should. I mean, have we ever had a presidential... Since the 60s. Uh, yeah. Really? It's been that long yeah, since... I mean, it's been the long. televised debate had... with Kennedy and Nixon was the, the first. Oh, we've all, you're saying yeah, we've all, always, always had, had debates. Yeah. yeah uh, the, the problem is the Republicans walked away from the Commission on Presidential Debates, so they've got to figure it out. 
And from what we heard from the podium yesterday, it doesn't sound like he's going to wind up debating. However, to... I don't uh, think he can. Uh, right. I don't think to, he can. Well, well, listen, I think a lot of people are going to watch tonight to see whether or not Joe Biden can get through the speech because this is one of the rare times in the Biden administration where... There are no handlers. Mm. There are no explainers explaining what he was talking about. It's just him on the stage, and we're going to be able to see him in real time how he does. But this is a written speech that's already prepared and oh. written for him in a debate. He's been can't for three days to learn. We have, we have seen him have trouble with a that's teleprompter. That's true. But imagine a debate when he can't take his flashcards. He can't take his note cards. Well, yeah. and that's why Donald Trump wants the debate anytime. Uh, the Biden camp, mm -hmm. to your point, has responded. They said if Donald Trump is so desperate to see President Biden in prime time, he doesn't have to wait. He can just watch the State of the Union yeah, address. Such a yeah. dodge. Such a dodge. But, well, they're not going to debate. But can KJP comment on that? Uh, with that is that a violation Peter of the Hatch Act? She Juicy. dodged it. I think it's, but is it a violation of the Hatch Act? is. I don't think saying the two nominees that have been announced confirming if the president is going to debate. The I don't think that's campaigning. Right. He's Anything had three days off to learn this speech. Right. Yeah. Anytime there's a question that regards the election, mm -hmm. she reverts to can't talk about Call it. Call the campaign. Hatch. Call Always. the campaign. The last Call thing the I'll campaign. say before we move on to our next topic is part of the problem with the RNC right now that they're talking about is there were people on the commission that were extremely anti-Trump. So the president said, hey, I'll do it with anyone. The RNC is concerned because they say, look, these people are making open statements against Donald Trump. Moderators that are biased. That. Yeah. You can't what, have what that. Was I mean, we deal off. with that with the media every day. At least we could get a fair debate when both candidates are there. I hope you're right. All We'd right. love to see it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.